Hello everyone, this is Video Master Niranjan Navargun for Chess.com and today I am going to cover the game of the day. Of all the games that took place in the Olympiad today, I feel that this was one of the most exciting games with a lot of twists and turns. This is a game between Vietnamese Grandmaster An Thuy Nguyen versus Indian Grandmaster Nihal Sari. Let's get straight into the game. White played d4, black played d5, c4, c6. Nihal plays a lot of openings with the black side against 1d4 and in this game he chose slab. To be honest, I feel it's very difficult to predict his openings. Let's get to the game after knight f3, knight f6, queen b3, Nihal played d takes c4, queen takes c4, bishop f5, g3, e6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles shot, castles shot, and then after e3, Black played knight bd7, rook d1, and in this position, Nihal played pawn to h6. He wants to create a square for this bishop, also for the king. This, in a way, is played uh, keeping in mind that the bishop on f5 could be attacked with the possible e3, e4. I like this move. And after queen e2, he plays bishop h7. Then white played knight c3. Now in this position, black can simply move the queen and connect the rook. This is also possible. And in this position, Nihal played knight e4. Now his decision is understandable because the position is slightly passive and uh, exchanging pieces could help. White played knight e4 and according, white played knight e1. And according to my database, there was a game played uh, in this position. Black played knight ef6 again. But Nihal chose knight df6. The game that I'm talking about is a game between Goodman versus Bohem in 2017. So in that game, uh, Black came back with his knight to f6. But in this game, Nihal played knight df6. And after f3, he decided to chop off the knight. And after bc3, he played knight d5. Now there are different ways to defend this pawn. But I like the way White defended with bishop d2. Because he's not only supporting the pawn, but also uh, developing the last piece. Now in this position, uh, queen a5 is interesting. The computer suggests c5 which is also interesting because it's a pawn break. The idea of c5 is that if white plays e4, you go back with your knight but you keep an eye on the d4 pawn. So that the queen also attacks the pawn and pawn also attacks the d4 pawn. And after bishop e3, he has knight a4. You know, you attack another pawn on c3. And after rook a7, you develop with tempo and play queen a5. So this is the idea of you know, the pawn break immediately. But in the game after bishop b2, Nihal played queen a5, which is okay. But the idea is after c4, he wants to go queen a6. So that's the pin he is thinking about. Now after e4, he played knight b6. And after rook d b1, I think white is already slightly better because the knight is not really doing anything here. Uh, because you know, it's the one good thing about the knight on b6 is that it's keeping uh, the b7 protected. But once this knight is forced to go from b6, the b7 pawn will be in danger. And if you want to defend this pawn with rook b8, then you also have to consider moves like bishop f4, which is tricky. So I feel that you know, white sense that he is better and is slowly trying to improve the position. Let's go to the next move. After rook fd8, a4, bishop f8, bishop f1, he decided that uh, pawn break is the way to go and he played e5. And after queen f2, you know, he's just maintaining the tension. Black played e takes d4, white played c takes d4, and Nihal went with his queen to the king side with queen h5. And as I mentioned earlier, white got a5 and now the b7 pawn is in danger. Black played knight d7. And after rook takes b7, we know that white is a pawn up, white is clearly better. But look at the way he keeps the pressure. He tries to improve the position of his pieces and then exchanges off opponent's active pieces and keeps some traps here and there. Just observe. After knight f6, he plays bishop e3. And now you see that the rook on b7 is very active. So he plays rook d7. Objectively, I think if you play a6, white is. If white plays a6, he is better. But white decided for some reason to capture the rook and after knight d7, knight d3, black played queen g6, white played rook b1, black played queen e6, white played rook b7. They say that 
the seventh rank is the heaven for the rooks so the rook is already on b7 and after knight f6 knight f4 queen c8 pawn to a6 Nihal played knight e8 he wants to push this rook away because we know that it's irritating and after knight e8 white played bishop s3 black played queen to d8 now this is a position uh, you can spend a moment to think about this position there's a flashy move for white Consider if there are any captures or sacrifices that could help you win. Okay, I'm going to reveal the move now. White played rook takes f7. The point being that the king cannot capture the rook because of a check. Can you spot the flashy check? No, it's not bishop e6 if you're considering that. Yes, it's queen to a2. This check finishes of the game. If the king goes to e7, there is a mate here and if the king goes to f6, there is a mate here again. This is a forced checkmate. So that's the reason why he cannot really take the rook. So black played knight d6 and white played rook d7 attacking the queen and you can see from here it's all about the game of reserves. You will know what I mean. Black played queen a5 and in this position White played queen b2. And here's my question. Can you sense the drawback of white's last move? It's a good idea to consider ideas and drawbacks, ideas of your opponent's move as well as the drawbacks of your opponent's last move. And once you realize that uh, there's a drawback with queen b2, you will find queen to e1 check that picks the bishop. And this was played by Nihal. And after queen e1 check, it's not the end of story. After king g2, queen takes e3, the position is still balanced but it's already slightly um, in favor of black because black has made a comeback in the position and after e5 knight b5 bishop to e6 check king h8 bishop g4 now this move is understandable he wants to keep as many pieces as possible towards his king and white played uh, and black played knight to c3 and then white played queen to b7. Now this is a risky move because this queen had to be on f2 to protect the king but he went queen b7 and you know that the rook is attacked. So Nihal simply played rook e8 and after queen takes c6 the king starts to feel the heat as black played knight to e2. Now there are different kinds of checks. He's threatening queen g1, he's threatening knight takes f4 and in this position both the players were very low on time and white played knight g6 check. Black played bishop g6, queen takes g6, and black went for the check on g1, king to h3. Now in this position, black played queen f1 check, king h4. I'm going to pause a moment here and see if you can find the move. Uh, in this position, you can see if, if there is a way to threaten a check. Okay, in this position, Nihal played bishop e7 check. The correct move here was to play queen g2 to threaten queen into h2 because if white captures the rook on e8, it's all mate. Can you spot it? Yeah, queen h2 and then queen g3 followed by mate on g5. So you cannot really take the rook. So after queen g2, I think black is winning but what happened in the game was after bishop e7, white had a chance to make a comeback. It's not over until it's over. So here uh, I looked at the timestamp and uh, I saw that Nihal played this in just less than a second, you know, that fast. So in this position, White also played King H5. He took two seconds to play it, but Rook takes E7 was the way to move forward. Because after Rook takes E7, there is Bishop F5 threatening a mate. And in order to defend against this threat, Black King has to run. But after Queen H7 check, King F8, there is another mating threat threatening queen h8 and black has to play rook f7 and then white has queen h8 king e7 and then queen to b8 white still has some initiative and the game could have you know still continued but after king h5 can you spot the tactic that won the game for nihal yeah consider the checks yes you are if you're if you're considered knight g3 that's great that's the answer knight g3 hg3 queen check bishop h3 and then queen takes h3 so in this position uh, white resigned 
because after Bishop X3 there is a mate. I hope you enjoyed this uh, game of the day. I'll be back again. See you soon.